Houston, we have a problem. So what you see here is grass growing underneath this fence line into our garden here. That's supposed to be no dig and really shouldn't have much weeds growing through the pathways and the, um, the beds, but um, it requires maintenance and uh, I basically just haven't done the maintenance very well the past, you know, year and a half. And so, uh, and this is growing in from a hay field, which is directly next behind this um, fence line. So this grass is a problem and it can be an overwhelming problem if you, you know, don't know how to deal with a problem like this. Um, you know, I deal with a lot of problems like this on a farm and when it's on a half acre scale, it can be really stressful because this kind of stuff can really impact your crop yields and stuff. So I want to talk about how to solve a problem like this today because it can look really overwhelming at first, but if you break it down into simple steps, it's pretty much how you can solve a problem that's 10 times as big as this. So the first thing I like to do when I see something like this on a farm um, is pause. And it seems really counterintuitive when you have something that's this urgent, because this is kind of urgent. We're at, we're May 26th and we need to get this whole garden planted pretty quick here. So it actually is pretty urgent to get this taken care of and solve this problem. But if you make a rash decision and just start, you know, you, a flurry of activity to try and solve it, usually you're not gonna solve it well and, or actually solve the problem. And we wanna come as close to solving the problem permanently as possible. So what I like to do is when I see these kinds of things, I like to just take a step back, pause, and think about it, and try and think about it from a calm place and not a stressful, fear-based place. Uh, and that takes a lot of practice. I mean, I'm not good at it. The first couple times I've had to deal with problems like this on a farm, it's definitely not turned out like that. You know, it takes some experience to get there where you can just be like, this is a big problem. I need to take a step back, look away for a minute, digest it, think about it, and come back when I'm calm and take a deep breath and think about how to solve it. So that first step for me is take a big, deep breath and pause. The second step I like to take with a problem like this is to thoroughly identify the problem. So we actually have a couple problems going on here. It's not just the grass. There's dandelions, there's seeded grass that needs to be taken care of. Um, there's also this stuff called bindweed, which if you're an experienced gardener, you're probably aware that that's one of the worst weeds ever. We got a nice little patch of it in the corner here. And so what do we got to do is when we're calm is I, you know, look at the whole area that we're trying to solve and identify the problem or problems. And the biggest one is that grass, um, because if we don't take care of that, the grass is going to just keep growing into the garden. Um, and I know from experience that what, is going on here is the rhizomes, which is the root system from the grass in the field, is growing underneath the fence line and it's popping right through our no dig garden with cardboard and stuff underneath. And so we don't have a really strong uh, barrier on this side of the garden. So, uh, you know, when you have a problem like this, you want to really take some time and think about. What's the source of the problem? And the next thing to do is obviously figure out a solution to it. But the, the figuring out the source is a big deal. So, you know, bindweed, for example, it's a good idea to, you know, in a lot of this just takes experience. 
Um, it's not exactly like you're going to know the solution or identify, be able to identify the problem your first time, but with experience, you're going to get better at it. But bind weed is a really tough one to solve. Um, that one is going to take consistent effort this whole season to get it under control. Um, we're going to need to be pulling it regularly, uh, and possibly flame weed it regularly to get that root system weakened and it actually will die eventually, but that's a pretty tough one to solve. The grass is kind of the same thing, but um, what we need to do is stop it from growing. And there's a couple ways we could do that that I'll go over next. But the main thing is after you're calm and you've taken a pause is to thoroughly identify the problem, write it down if you have to. And that'll get you in a place where you can start to research solutions. But you need to identify what the problem is. And the main thing is the grass is growing underneath the fence line. We need to get it under control before we start to plant this garden. And also we got to remove all these weeds. Most of these weeds are just annuals. You know, this is um, lamb's quarter, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm actually pretty bad at my plant identification. I just kind of know what they do uh, with weeds. Um, and ultimately just to stay under control with weeds is you just need to know how they behave. And these ones are not as big a deal. Dandelions aren't that big a deal either. All I got to do is fork these up, get rid of them. Vine weeds, a big problem. Um, we're just going to have to keep on top of that one. And then, um, we'll be able to turn this into a usable garden bed in, you know, maybe an hour, probably less, uh, just because I know what's going on in here. The grass is a bigger problem. So um, I already have in my head a list of what's going on here. But, you know, if you're new to something like this, just take a pause with a little pen and paper, write down what the problems are in your garden or uh, whatever you're trying to solve. And then that gives you uh, something to research solutions from. Now, since we've identified our problem or problems, um, the next thing to do is to find the solutions. Now, I kind of already know what solutions we're going to use for this problem because I just have experience with it. But in my experience, the best way to find solutions is right where you are right now, YouTube. And I have learned more than half, if not all, well, not, not all, but more than half of my gardening, uh, farming expertise has come from YouTube. You know, whenever I have a problem like this, I'll identify it and I'll go literally search on YouTube right where you're at, how to solve this problem. And I just watch a lot of YouTube videos in general on this kind of stuff because I'm really passionate about it and interested. But I have seen um, one way that people deal with um, the perimeter of their no dig gardens on YouTube. And it's from a guy named Richard Perkins and kind of a combination of Richard Perkins and Charles Dowding. Those guys are really awesome. Uh, Richard Perkins is a, a big, um, he has a big market garden in Sweden that he uses the same technique, no dig with, um, cardboard, wood chips and compost. And I've seen what he'll do is every year he'll go around the edge of his, uh, garden and dig basically a r roughly six inch deep trench um, and fill it with fresh wood chips. And that will create a little barrier for the grass to um, hit when it's trying to grow in from the outside and it will stop encroaching. So I'm going to try that. Um, and I'm also going to do something else because this is too, I can't solve this problem by just doing that. Um, I just know from experience there's too much grass here. So I'm going to dig that little trench right up against the fence line. But I'm also going to cover the uh, basically this whole space with uh, black weed fabric. And uh, that's sort of different than what they teach, but I don't want it. I don't have time to do um, a really strict dogmatic no dig um, solution here because that would require me getting cardboard, ripping up the plastic, ripping all the tape off of it and just a lot more work. And I have a farm to manage. I don't have time to do that. So what I'm going to do is 
black weed fabric, which stops light from hitting this grass and lets water come through. And I'll put mulch on top of it so you won't even know it's there, but that will permanently solve this. Um, and it will, I won't have to maintain it over time because I think this grass is pretty strong. The root system is pretty deep and I don't want to have to keep dealing with this every single year if I can. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to dig that trench and create that little, um, edging is what they call it is what Richard Perkins calls it. Um, uh, he's called Ridgedale permaculture. If you want to Google him, he's really good, but, uh, you use a shovel and I'm going to demonstrate this, but, um, we're going to try that to stop it from growing. And then I'll put the black fabric down and put more wood chips on top of it. So you won't even know this is here. And then for dandelions and stuff like that, we're just going to take a digging fork, pull those up by the tap root and bindweed. We're going to, um, try and rip up as much of that as we can. And, um, we'll just continuously flame that over the season and just keep ripping it up and hopefully weaken that root system by the end of the year. But that's how we're going to solve this. And, you know, research on the internet is probably the best place for you to figure out how to solve these things. There's so much value on YouTube. Um, kind of what I'm trying to do here is add more value to YouTube because there's a lot more, I think, to talk about with growing food and stuff. But uh, I would recommend just literally search the internet for your a solution to your problem and nine times out of 10, you're going to find one. It's not always going to work, but um, for something like this, there's lots of ways to solve it. So that's the next step. So the last step to solving the problem is once you find your solution is execute. So I'm going to throw on the time lapse right now and do exactly what I just explained. I'm going to do that edging process. I'm going to lay it, probably rake out um, a little bit of these wood chips and I'm going to cover all this grass in weed fabric and probably cut some of it um, a little bit on the edge because I don't want it to grow underneath the weed pad fabric. It's only gonna be three feet long, but I'm gonna show you that in time-lapse form right now. So we're done with the weed mat setup, digging the trench, filling it with wood chips. And uh, I went ahead and cleared 
this whole section of the perennial weeds and the uh, lamb's quarter. So should be pretty close to weed freed now. I'm sure there's some I missed, but you know, that's just part of the deal. But you know, the way that I tackled that was I broke it down and looked at every step laser focused and I'm not paying attention to all the other things going on because that's when you get overwhelmed. And, uh, you know, I got it done in about two hours, which is, you know, a lot, but, uh, hopefully we won't have to do that again. I'm going to just leave this open without wood chips on top of it for right now, because I want to see how it works. And that kind of brings me to my last point, which is, you know, you could look up your solutions on the internet and try them, but there's no guarantees. You know, every bit of effort that you put into the garden, your farm, your homestead, it's a risk. You don't really know if it's going to work until you try it. I've never actually tried that edging thing. And I've used weed mat a lot before, but I've never tried that edging thing. And I could tell I probably didn't do it right because... I don't have the right kind of shovel and the uh, the wooden fence is actually buried a lot deeper than I thought. So the grass actually kind of went like this. So hopefully I slowed it down real good and it won't be growing underneath this three foot barrier. We'll see. You know, there's no guarantees, but I'm pretty confident that I definitely slowed it down for a, quite a while. And if I have to, I'll leave this on for the rest of the, until literally this time next year. And I'll take it off and see, because if you block light from plants for at least 12 months, they're pretty much all going to die. Bindweed's a little different. That's a really, really tough one. There's a lot of it right around here. And that's just going to take some weekly maintenance. But there's risk involved in all of these solutions to problems. You never know if it's really going to work until you do it. And this is something I've actually never done before. So... Um, we'll see, but that's how I solve problems. And this was a fairly big problem for a garden, but on a farm, it's about 10 times the scale. So, you know, when I have a whole field of dandelions or something, which I'm going to show a little timeless video of me pulling dandelions in my farm field, just to give you some perspective on how big of a deal this thing is on a farm. And the only way to deal with it on a farm is to just take a pause look at it from one bed at a time is what I use as a rule of thumb on the farm. You know, on a garden, it's much easier because it's just smaller, but just laser focus on one little part at a time, take one step at a time. And that's how you can tackle a really big problem like this. And the field, I had it completely covered with dandelions because I neglected the weeding for a couple years and it's been a pretty bad spring on pulling dandelions but i'm almost done with it but if i it was really urgent because if those things went to seed which they just did in the field around me problem would be a hundred times worse you know because i'd have truckloads of dandelion seed in the in the ground so we don't want that so it can get kind of stressful with some of these problems but you know you could be surprised at how much you can accomplish if you really just slow down focus and just this is what I call focused work. When you're really focused in a couple hours, you can pretty much solve the problem. And now we have a place where we could grow food the rest of this year with relatively low amount of weeding to do. You know, I know we're still going to have to do some more, but um, anyway, hope you enjoyed that one and we'll see you in the next one.